Hello everyone and welcome to special uses of the Helios stage as simulated in Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. The Helios stage was recently announced by Impulse Space and we got some details about it, but not all details about it. And this is a model by Pekka, who also modeled the Falcon 9, which we will be using with it, and also the Starship that we will be using with it. Actually, we'll be using the Falcon Heavy with it, uh, let me take that back. Uh, we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, but this is just a quick model and it's probably going to be improved upon as more details come out. But the basic details that we have are that it has 14 tons of propellant, it has a methane oxygen engine that has 67 kilonewtons of thrust, we don't know exactly what the ISP is, however we do know the payload capacity to geostationary orbit, uh, that is not geostationary transfer orbit, this is the actual geostationary orbit. It's supposed to be able to carry five tons to that. And so extrapolating from that and assuming a reasonable tank mass, uh, it's not actually showing the tank mass here, uh, but assuming a reasonable tank mass for uh, using the procedural tanks as a sort of stand-in, uh, Pekka got 362 seconds of ISP, which seems okay for a methane oxygen engine. And this engine is called the Dadenib. So that is our little engine there. And the question is, what can we do with this? It's supposed to get payloads to a geosynchronous or a geostationary orbit, but that's not what I'm going to use it for, of course. I mean, uh, there, there are possibilities with this, and I'm going to show you some of them and how they worked out during a live stream. Now, uh, this is a little bit more touched up than the live stream version. I uh, used an earlier version of this, and Pekka's still working on it. Uh, so Pekka took the information from the live stream and improved upon it and I don't know if it's going to be part of his mod pack yet as of the making of this video but I'll link the uh, Pekka's mods in the video description and once it's added to the mod pack you'll be able to get it there. So anyway, uh, I am going to jump to the live stream video and show you how things work and what the ideas are. The first idea is to tuck the Helios stage into Dragon's Trunk to create a full-on service module that is Mephalox. Uh, there are only a few use cases for this because you don't need this much propellant for low Earth orbit operations. In this case we are launching it on Falcon Heavy because we're trying to send it to the moon on a flyby for tourists, but Dragon can't survive a re-entry from the moon. It really, really can't. Uh, so, I know there's been arguments about this, but no, it can't. Uh, so, what I wanted to do with the Helios stage is to slow it down prior to it hitting the atmosphere on the way back, so that it, it won't be able to cut out all of the velocity from the lunar return, but it would be able to cut out, hopefully, enough so that we could enter safely. But this was a test. I didn't know whether it would be possible for the Dragon capsule to re-enter safely if we cut out that much velocity and also I didn't know how much velocity we could actually reduce the entry by. So that is what we're testing here with Falcon Heavy in expendable mode. This is Pekka's Falcon Heavy and he also cooked up the launch script but I decided to take manual control after the core ran out for practical reasons and so we abort the program there and continue on so that we have a better control over things as well this configuration is a little bit different than normal so nice glow on the nozzle there as we continue to orbit and we're not going to have enough delta v in the falcon upper stage in order to transfer to the moon so we will have to use part of the helios stage for the transfer you can see about 2300 meters per second there uh, we could probably have done better. I don't think the trajectory was perfectly optimized, so we could probably get another 100 meters per second potentially. And so here's the ignition and the start of our transfer to the moon. Now, we accidentally had seven Kerbals on board, so we only had eight days. That's the amount of supplies we had. We had eight days for seven Kerbals. And so they're really packed in. Probably they wouldn't be sending seven people over to the moon like that. Uh, the plume on the stage has been fixed. Uh, uh, this was partly testing the Helio stage that Pekka made. And so we we're trying to figure out what the issues were with it. And it turns out this plume was one of the issues. So just pointed that out. And yeah, that should be fixed by now. And here we're off going over to the moon. You can see we have 1500 meters per second, but we're also going to be doing some corrections along the way. And so the goal is to reduce our return velocity by 1500 meters per second in the hope that the Dragon spacecraft can survive that. 
I decided to pass by the moon at within 5,000 kilometers, but I didn't really want them to get close, and uh, they sh the tourists should have gotten a good view of Earth and the moon right there, so that would be nice. But this made the free return trajectory a little bit more flexible. I, uh, It just d demonstrates that it could happen at various times, basically. NASA could get this all perfect, of course, and get it closer to the moon and get the free return trajectory very neat. But I just wanted to do it very quickly as a test of the stage. So here we're doing a correction to make sure that our Earth periapsis after passing by the moon is nice and in the atmosphere. And of course we did a barbecue roll for thermal purposes. I don't know if a Dragon would do that, but anyway, it seemed like a good idea because it's got the radiators on one side, right? So then the solar panels on the other side. So probably a bar barbecue roll would be good. And then here is the main retroburn. This is what we are testing and we use about 1300 meters per second or something like that. And so that's how much we are... Actually, it's less than that that we're re reducing our velocity by because uh, we have to tilt up to make sure the periapsis doesn't get too low. Again, NASA could probably use the stage a little bit more efficiently or SpaceX could as well. Uh, but I wasted a little bit because we were keeping the periapsis in check and they could calculate that ahead of time in their case. So off goes the trunk with the stage, and here we are in re-entry, and you can see that we have an overheating indicator, and also the ablator is melting off pretty darn quickly. Uh, the rate of ablation was quite shocking. I don't know if I've got the heat shield set up properly for 1.12 with realism overhaul, because they've made thermal changes and this is an old mod, uh, so I might have to check that out. I didn't know what to expect when we ran out of ablator, because I generally don't. So, we ran out of a blader and it didn't blow up, and I was wondering about that. Uh, don't worry, uh, it'll catch up to us, but for now, it's not blowing up. And we pop up a little bit, but we stay in the atmosphere. It was a good altitude, it doesn't go outside the atmosphere, it's just slowing down. It's good to pop up a little bit. But then, uh, here on the next leg of the descent, uh, it, well, it, it overheats really quickly. I mean, it, the little bar just pops up really fast and it explodes. So yeah, the not having a blader did catch up to us. You can see that the heat tolerance of the spacecraft is just 1073, but it didn't say anything about the heat shield blowing up. Um, so maybe the heat tolerance of the heat shield is too high. <laughs> but anyway, the point is that I don't know if the he helio stage can be used for that, but then again, it's dependent on the heat modeling of Kerbal Space Program and Realism Overhaul right now, so it's a bit of a question mark, maybe, maybe. Uh, anyway, next idea is to put payloads in an array on Starship like this, much like they would have been in the Space Shuttle. The Space Shuttle was designed to carry four Delta rocket class payloads inside of it with PAMDs and all that, and they would be all in a row. And in one mission, it brought two satellites up and brought two satellites down. It had the berths for them, but it had spaces for four of the Delta rocket payloads. And I was trying to do that here, but there wasn't enough clearance uh, vertically, or uh, depends on which direction you consider vertical. Uh, so I decided to orient them like this and only fit three. And with that, we could fit the helio stages plus some payload on top of them. And they're meant to be able to carry five tons to geostationary orbit and seven tons to the moon. Uh, I left a lot of room on that. We decided to use Starlink version 2s, which Pega also modeled uh, along with the Falcon rocket. And so we have, I, I think there's eight of them on there, and that's about five tons. So the Helio stages should be able to get those to the moon and also get them into orbit around the moon was the goal so that they wouldn't have to do that on their own. And having three stages like this means that they can go into three different orbits and then we'll have communications around the moon, which I've always wanted. Anyway, so that was the idea of using Starship for a mission like this and Starship could use an upper stage. I've made my own upper stages for Starship after all. Uh, I have a metalog stage for Starship, but those are bigger ones and they're not meant to carry smaller payloads in series like this, those are meant to carry a substantial payload. And so yeah, I've got my own little series of Starship stages, but this is an option in real life that could happen. I don't know if they've thought of this before, but possibly. And it's, I, I figure that St Starlings would probably be the first thing that they put on them. Uh, anyway, so this is Pekka's Starship with the impressive effects and everything. Uh, very interesting work done. It required a custom plugin for that. And 
it is launching with a script that uh, Pekka adapted for the purpose. So yeah, it's nice that I can blame Pekka for any mishaps that occur with all these things. Anyway, here is the staging. That happens very smoothly. Now, the payload capacity of Starship is more than enough for this payload. Uh, with the three of them in there, and uh, 24 Starlings I think it is, uh, we're talking about a total of no more than 64 tons, I think. So, yeah, we're not testing Starship at all here, as far as its payload capacity is concerned. In fact, once we reach orbit, Pekka told me to dump propellant, because we were too heavy. So, and Pekka has been working on a re-entry script, and so uh, told me that we had a limit on that. But first, of course, we have to get the payloads out, so out they go. The first one went out very easily, but then these two, they're pretty snug next to each other, so it's a little bit hard, and I put those girder segments around. They're not the best arrangement ever. I decided to release both of them to see if that would work, and it sort of started to look like it would, but then stopped. They got stuck again. They got really decisively stuck right there. So, yeah, that's not great. But, of course, there's a time warp trick, and so I just time warped them out. <laughs> That, 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 that part of the test, we'll say, is done. Pekka also wanted me to test the re-entry script, so I'll show that. But that's a, very much a work in progress, and requires a lot of interesting things. First, of course, we have to dump the propellant, and we dump like 40 tons, so that gives you an idea of the extra capacity that we have available here. I think the entry mass was supposed to be 134 tons max, and so can see, well, that's basically what I get to. too. That leaves us with 800 meters per second. I don't know why that is, uh, so that all depends on Pekka's testing. Maybe we can... I should be able to come back down with some payload mass, obviously, so that's just something that has to be worked on. Anyway, here it comes down, and we can see the sunrise and Mercury there, and we are approaching the west coast of North America. Aha, uh -huh, California there. We pass by Boca Chica. You can see my Boca Chica scenery off to the right. And there is overheating. Uh, this is not easy. Starship is not OP during re-entries or anything. It's not going to be easy bringing it back from the moon or anything either. So, yeah, that's got to be a whole other trouble. We're just working on low Earth orbit right now. Uh, I don't know. I mean, is it supposed to come back from the moon? I don't know what the rules are. Anyway, so we're passing by the cape, obviously we overshot. The reentry script is based on my old shuttle script, and so there's probably some tweaking that's necessary. And you can see flipping around because somewhere, something about this part, it doesn't like. I don't know the details, but yeah, it eventually stabilizes onto its tail, but... Yeah, that transition between the orientation during reentry and getting onto its tail, it's not great. Pekka's still working on that part and didn't really get to this landing part yet. I uh, shared a landing script with him, but that's gonna take some adjustment. And that's not really hard, actually. The hard part is actually the transition between the re-entry orientation and then getting onto the tail and doing that safely and managing how the flaps work in that situation. So, yeah, uh, as far as the actual touchdown is concerned, that's probably easier than that transition and also getting back to where we're supposed to get back to properly. That's another thing that's going to take a lot of work. But anyway, the point is the Helio stage and the two uses I presented. I think it's a nifty little stage. It's sort of like something that I would design. In fact, it's not too dissimilar from the service module on my Lynx spacecraft and could just be slotted in and used in that purpose if it has enough ignitions. So I like it and uh, I hope that when Spekka adds it to his mod, people will make use of it. I think it is a good little addition. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.